I was wondering, how come abbreviation is such a long word? Because abbreviation is not an abbreviation, M. Ha ha, very funny. I'm sure there's more to it than that. Actually, I did read something about the origin of the word being fairly short. It started with brevis, which is Latin for short, and also the root of brief. Then how did it get so long? Ab was added to brevier to make it abbrevier, a verb meaning to shorten. Then it got converted to a noun by adding eonem at the end, becoming abbreviationem, which means something that has been shortened. Then the M was removed and voila! That explanation was way too long for the word abbreviation. Hmm, no popcorn for you. Aww. Running out of popcorn, Emma. We need to get some more. I need change. You can't just want change. You need to be the change you want to see. That's what Mahatma Gandhi said. Don't try to show off what you learnt yesterday in school, stupid. I'm talking about money. I need change for 100 bucks to buy more popcorn. Don't call me stupid. How am I supposed to know what you are talking about when change and change mean the same thing? Use your brain. If I say I've lost my bat, are you going to think I'm talking about my pet bat? A flying mammal that hangs upside down at night? Of course not. I'm not dumb. I know you are too uncool to have an awesome pet like a bat. Who are you calling uncool? Shh! Stop fighting you guys. The words you are talking about like bat and bat or change and change are called homonyms. These words are spelled the same and pronounced the same but have different meanings. Anyone who is familiar with the English language will know what the word means by putting it in context. Whoa! Imagine the confusion of someone trying to learn the language for the first time. Hmm, true. It can get problematic. The only problem I see is, we still don't have enough popcorn and I still don't have change. W. If it is double U, why is it made of two V's? <laughs> the ancient Roman alphabet did not have the letter W or the letter V. However, the sound was represented by two U's, literally a W. Then the English language evolved and gave birth to the letter W. But it never lost its original name, W. And reason, why are you, you here? You mean W? Both of you, please leave. Emma, have you noticed how fast these builders are working? Till last month, there was no building. And look at this huge structure now. Yes, 
and soon there will be people living in this building. Come to think of it, if a building is already built, then why is it still called a building? Has the construction stopped? Or are the invisible gnomes still building the floors? Firstly, there are no gnomes in the city. Now, it is called a building because the ing in the English language is added to certain verbs to make them nouns. The verb built is suffixed with ing to make the thing a noun, building. So, building is a noun and when it is being built, it is a verb? <laughs> The act is of building it when the actual work is in progress. Building is a gerund, a noun made from a verb. Any action verb can be made a gerund. For example, singing is my hobby or nursing is a good career. So, it is called a building to denote the process of building it? You got that bang on, M. You are a smart boy. Here, you get sprinkles on your ice cream for that. Don't be a smarty pant, Emma. Okay, I'll take the sprinkles. No! Hey, Emma, I bet you can't see babbling, bumbling band of baboons really fast five times. You really want to play tongue twister? Then try saying a real one. How about Betty Butter bought a bit of butter, but she said the butter is bitter, so she bought a bit of better butter to make the bitter butter better. Hey, I know, I read somewhere about the most difficult tongue twister in the English language. Something with six. Um, six six. Shake six sheep six. Man, it is so difficult. See how long I have to pause after each word. I will have to write it down to even see it. You sure do. Sixth six shakes sixth sheep six is considered as the hardest tongue twister by Guinness Book of World Records. It is extremely difficult to say this string of words quickly multiple times. It may not make much sense, but then tongue twisters are just a string of silly words put together to exercise your tongue. Why don't you try again? Six, 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 so, sorry, six, uh, this one will surely twist my tongue. I'm happy with my bumbling baboons. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Emma, now that you seem to spend so much time with that dictionary of yours, can I ask you a question? I am enjoying my ice cream, but go ahead. Which alphabet in the English language has the most words starting with it? Tell me, which alphabet do you think it is? Well, um, I think it is E. I think it is A. No, not even close. It is the alphabet S which has more English words starting with it than any other letter. The reason being, there are more clusters of words that begin with SC, SH, SP or ST. These clusters also act as independent words. Yes, now that I've come to think about it, there are so many words with S. School, shut, special, string, straight, shun, spatula, scan. Wow! Do you know, Samuel Morse, the inventor of the Morse code, was the first one who had the curiosity in knowing the answer to this question. So he used his techniques of assigning codes to frequently use letters. Later, an analysis of the concise dictionary revealed S as the letter having most words. S sure is a winner. Now finish your ice cream. It is melting. Sheesh!
Emma, I need to finish my English homework. Can you help me? I need to borrow your Oxford dictionary. Sure, I will help you, Em. But do remind me to buy the new version of the dictionary tomorrow. New version? Isn't a dictionary like forever? No, it isn't. Do you know that a new word is added to the dictionary every two hours? So if that happens every day, imagine how many words will be added to the dictionary in a year. Wow, is that so? But where do they get hold of so many new words from? Everywhere. There can be old words or phrases which have been used and the meanings not known or new phrases or words or even slang words used today to communicate. Oh right, I came to know that the word Oompa Loompa from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory has been added to the Oxford Dictionary. Oompa Loompa? Really? <laughs> That's silly. You are silly. She is right Em. These are not just any silly words that are added. They are added because they have a meaning or refer to something unique. That is interesting. I can't imagine how much people who make dictionaries read. They do read a lot. Today, Oxford Dictionary is one of the largest and longest running research projects. Changes in language reflect in the day-to-day -day world and also in the dictionaries. Well then, let's go get the new version of the dictionary and then get on with the homework. Maybe we can fit in some new words too. Oh sure, that's likely nincompoop. Huh? Go get a dictionary. What is the shortest sentence in the English language? I am. <laughs> I know you are short, but I meant a sentence in the English language. Silly you. I am is the shortest sentence in English language. Doesn't have to do anything with my height. Is it? Yes. To make a complete sentence in English, you need a subject and a predicate. The sentence I am has both the subject I and predicate am. It also expresses a complete thought. So, I am is the shortest sentence. I read an article that go is a short sentence too. Hmm, in case of go as a sentence, the subject is understood as it is said to either singular or plural beings. Thus, by omitting you, it just becomes an ellipsis. Go is an imperative sentence. I am is a non-imperative short sentence. Wow! I never knew something short can be so complicated. Oh wait, Emma is a complicated girl too. Hey! I am not short. Uh? Why are you sitting with such a fat book, Emma? I could never read such big books. It isn't a book, Em. It's a dictionary, see? Oh, so tell me, which word are you looking for? I am trying to find if there are any ghost words in it. <laughs> Did you just say ghost word? What is that? And if it is a ghost word, can you really find it? Does the word look scary? <laughs> Actually, M, you just answered your question. It is difficult to find a ghost word in a dictionary. But a ghost word is a word which doesn't have any meaning and has been printed in the dictionary. These words are not used anywhere. I know what M is going to ask now. Why put them in a dictionary in the first place? Exactly. Why print them if these words are not used anywhere? 
Well, believe it or not, sometimes there are some words that have been printed in the dictionary due to a printing mistake or an error like typographical or linguistic confusion. There is one such fake word, Dodd, which made its way to Webster's dictionary and remained there for five long years before being discovered. There, can you see the ghosts now, Em? Do they look scary to you, huh? Orange is so sweet. It makes such a delightful treat. Try one, Em. Hey, Squeaky. You just made two words rhyme. Sweet and treat. Can you see it? Or are you in a dilemma, Emma? Happy to make my name rhyme. By the way, do you know any words in English that do not rhyme at all? Are there any such words? I always thought every word has some rhyming word in English language. Yes, but only four have none. No word in English language rhymes with month, orange, silver and purple. Really? Let me think. Um, orange. Hmm, gorange, florange, torange. <laughs> Those are not even words. A perfect rhyme demands the exact match of the way the word sounds from the stretched vowel to the last alphabet. For example, hat, cat, plate, ate. Later, alligator. Come to think of it, did you notice that three of the words that do not rhyme are the names of colors? Yes, and the fourth word that does not have a rhyme is month. You can't even fake rhyme for this word. Dunt, hunt, bunt, <laughs> nothing rhymes with it. Hey guys, let's write a poem with these four words. We can make up our own words which rhyme with them. Gee, sounds like fun to me. Hey Em, how was your trip to Dubai? I want to know everything about it. It was so much fun. I did not want to come back. So, did you learn some Arabic words? Mm, not really. Everyone seemed to understand and speak English. We heard some Arabic during the flight, but it was soon spoken in English as well. Well, English does seem to be the official language all over the world. Plus, English is the official language of the sky. It doesn't matter which country they are from. All pilots speak in English on international flights. Yeah. So, even if I go to say, um, Africa. Of course, silly. English is the language that is understood and learned by almost everyone all over the world. That's true. These days, the skies are so busy that accurate communication is most important. Communication lapses and errors can occur if different languages are used for different zones. So, English is officially used in the aviation industry worldwide to avoid any miscommunication. That makes so much sense. Imagine if I pilot a plane to Africa from India <laughs> and I communicate to them in Hindi. They wouldn't understand a thing and may not let me land. You got that. Now tell me about your trip and show me all your fun pictures. Yeah, me too. Okay, okay. Emma, did you see Johnny Depp on Alice Through the Looking Glass? I found the movie very interesting. Yes, it was good. But Johnny Depp was in the movie. Not on. Really? I thought it was on, like on television. No, silly. A movie is like a story from a book. You can be in a story from a book or in a movie. 
a television is a physical object and you can be on television <laughs> am i sitting on the television very funny when you are watching television you are watching pictures displayed on the television screen but a movie is not an object it is a collection of information or a story and the characters are all in a movie that's right it all started before the invention of movies or television people used to act in plays on a stage stage plays another reason can be that television shows are ongoing but movies are not thus you are on an ongoing television show but you are in a movie ha huh. i've got to hand it to you reason but now i am confused as to what is going on in my mind <laughs> <laughs>